Now today we're gonna to talk about how you can grow and stand out in a niche, even if it's completely saturated. Oh, yeah. One of the most common questions I get is that I'm creating content in fashion or fitness, but it's so saturated, I don't know how I can stand out, I don't know how to grow. This will be sort of the question that you always fall back to when you have to ask, you know, is this piece of content on brand or off brand? That's that's your message, that's your why. Now your niche is a little bit different. Your niche is the industry that you're in, what you're specifically teaching people and the content you're creating and pushing out consistently. So your message is where you start and your niche is the specific content that you're actually creating. You have your message, now you need your niche. And because we need to build a business around it, because that's the ultimate goal, right? To make money and to grow in your passion. And remember, by the way, standing out in a niche doesn't mean having millions and millions of followers. It means having a small amount of hyper-passionate, hyper-engaged followers who are so excited to buy from you and listen to you and take all your recommendations. So you're really going for your first 1,000 true fans. That's who you wanna build first. And then you can expand from there. I heard a quote in a book I was reading called Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson that said, the riches are in the niches. If you wanna make money, you really do need to niche down and figure out the industry you're creating content in. Here's some interesting stats that I've recently discovered that two million blog posts are created every single day. That's about 1,388 per minute. There's 95 million photos and videos posted to Instagram every single day. That's about 66,000 per minute. So by, by the time at the end of this video, there will be at least 100,000 pictures posted on Instagram and 300 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube. Now I'm not telling you these stats to discourage you, the opposite, I'm telling you that there's so much opportunity and there's lots of eyes and there's lots of people on all these platforms and if you can just carve out a small percentage of that, you can become successful, you can become, you can make money and you can build a sustaining business that matches your values and matches what you stand for within your niche. Here's the thing, we wanna find your true fans. We wanna find your thousand true fans, you know? So if you're talking about fashion, you're gonna get people who are just interested in fashion. But if you talk about fashion for men under 5'7", you're gonna get raving fans, right? You're going to get people who have a different set of problems that only you understand and they're gonna to flock to you as their leader. So a thousand true fans is better than a hundred thousand general people who happen to stumble upon your page. So there's three steps to picking a niche, growing in it, and standing out. The so step number one is to discover your unique expertise. And I know that sounds really general right now, but I'm gonna give you an example. You know, like what is unique about you specifically? You're gonna have a different story than me. So even though, even though if we're in the same exact industry, there might be some people who resonate more with your background and your story and what you've overcome than they would with me. And here's the, here's the problem that a lot of people run into at this point. They're trying to think of what they're an expert at that they can teach. What can you teach somebody? What can you help somebody with? That's going to be one of the factors in presenting your story to people. And you may not feel like an expert at any one thing. You have to give yourself permission to be an expert. So here's an example is that I'm a photographer, but I'm not a National Geographic published photographer. I am not the most successful photographer to ever walk the planet, but I'm not trying to teach people how to take, you know, Nat Geo level photos. I'm trying to teach people who have never taken a photo in their life how to take a picture. Imagine that you're, that the expertise in your industry is a book. You have chapter one and you have chapter 100. Let's take photography. I'm probably around chapter 30, but I'm not focused on teaching people who are on chapter 31 to 100. I'm focused on teaching people who are chapter zero to 29. That's who I wanna help, that's where my fans are gonna be. You can still help people who know less than you. There's, there's this idea called the knowledge gap curse. And this is where you forget what it's like not to know what you know. When you know something, you assume that everybody else knows it too. That's not the case. You know, people who don't know what you know are craving to learn from you. What chapter are you on in your industry? Don't focus on teaching people who are over here above you. Focus on the people who don't know, who are just starting. So you really do need to give yourself permission to be that expert and combine that with your unique perspective, your, your, your unique story. Okay, so that's step one. So step two is called the two qualifier rule. And this is actually a, a technique I learned from my buddy Brock over at The Modest Man when he was trying to come up with his blog. And what you do is you take your main market and you add two qualifiers. You add qualifier number one, you add that, you add in qualifier number two, 
and that equals your niche. Let's take fashion for example. You wanna build an, a page, a blog, you wanna become an influencer in the fashion industry. So you add a qualifier, fashion for men. Okay, then you add one more qualifier, fashion for men over 40. Maybe you're, maybe you're 40 and you wanna create a page for fashion for men over 40. Or maybe it's fashion for men in college. Now you're niching down and you're, and you're creating content that when people have a completely different set of problems, you know, style for students. I didn't have a lot of money in college. I didn't know how to dress well. Like I wanna go to the person who is telling me how to, how to dress well on a budget. Like that's who I'm gonna take information from. You know, here's another example. Let's take the fitness industry. You know, fitness and let's add a qualifier, fitness for women. And then let's add one more, fitness for moms. Now you have momswholift.com. Moms have a completely different set of problems than you know a high school girl, a college girl, or anyone else in the fitness industry who's a female. You're niching down and you're creating content for a very specific group of people. That's how you're gonna get your 1,000 true fans. Step number three is to share your other passions. This is where the relatability factor comes in. So yes, I have a men's fashion page, but I also love photography. So now if I create content around men's fashion and photography, yes, the people who love men's fashion, they're still gonna resonate with me. Now the people who love photography are gonna resonate with me. But the people who love fashion and photography, you're gonna be like, oh man, this person has the exact same passions as me. Like, true fan. Now, now they become you know, a raving fan, they're relating to you. So what are other passions that you can bring in once you have your unique expertise and you've given yourself permission to be the expert, you've niched down to a specific industry, you, have, you bring in some of your other passions so people can relate to you. I want you to go through all three of those steps and I want you to fill in what you can do to niche down and create content in something specific. And there's a bonus point here that I wanted to talk about is don't get caught up on the name. When I first started fashion blogging, I was so caught up on what the name could be, what the name should be. And I, and I ended up calling one of my old mentors, Antonio Centeno, and I asked him, hey, I'm thinking about changing the name, I don't like the name. He said, man, just pick a name and move on. It's a 1% issue, it is not important. What the heck does GoDaddy mean? What does Nike mean? These are household names now, but when they first started, what did those names mean? They didn't mean anything. So don't get caught up and on spinning your wheels over a name. Here, here, here's how you should pick a name. It should be short, it should be easy, and it should be available. So it should be two to three words max. It should be easy to say and also easy to type. So if you were to tell a friend what, your, what the name of your URL was, they should be able to hear it and type it out instantly. And it should be available, meaning the URL should be available so you can go buy it. .com is awesome. It doesn't have to be .com anymore. .io, .co, .net, those are all great URLs to get as well. But this, the name matters so much less than the content that you're producing. So pick a name, move on, and start creating content. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.